Hello, this is Professor Marvel, and this is our week two content recording. Hope everybody's doing well. So this week, we had lots of things to cover. Um, we had um, numerous, in the P in your introduction to maternity and peds, we had numerous common childhood ailments, which you need to review. And there were, there were only specific pages in each chapter to review for each ailment. So please don't go to the chapters and, and read the chapter from start to finish. Um, just go to the pages that were assigned. Um, we also had um, the second page in your med surge book, page uh, 1024. In week one, we had 1023, which is um, community care community caring. So uh, please take a look at that. Um, and then in our fundamentals book, you had chapters 11 and 12. So I'm going to review a bit of that today. Um, you also have your uh, week two notes that I sent out in the announcement to supplement your um, studying prepar uh, preparation. And those are actually a really good summary of all the content uh, content we're going to be covering this week. Um, and then your discussion question this week and week two, um, actually is picking three common childhood ailments. So it matches up with, um, the content from this week in your canvas module. You also have two additional readings. One is with the school nurse and one is on, um, lead exposure. So we'll cover that. Um, so I'm going to share my screen. And I'm just going to, we're going to cover um, the two chapters in the book. Okay. So chapter this week, we're responsible for uh, growth and development. And again, um, when you start to, uh, it's probably about half, half, as far as um, chapters that you're responsible for with regards to portions of the chapter or the full chapter. Um, so in this week, uh, we are responsible for the whole chapter in growth and development, chapter 11, and then same with um, adulthood in the family in chapter 12. Okay. So as always, um, remember the PowerPoints, just a reminder, the PowerPoints I've sent you for chapters 11 and 12 in your fundamentals book are essentially a outline of the chapter. Okay. So it's not new information. Um, the PowerPoint, it, it outlines the chapter. Okay. With a with some additional detail. Um, so when you look at, um, each chapter, at least the chapters you're responsible for in full, um, please take a look at the objectives. Okay. Upon completion of, uh, reading through this chapter, you should be able to do the following. Okay. And then there's the 13 objectives that, um, you should be able to articulate. And I go through the chapters and highlight information in the chapters that helps support you um, to complete being able to articulate uh, the objectives, okay? So this is growth and development. So as you'll see, I'll skip through part of the chapter. I'm gonna go to my highlighted sections because I've obviously I've already reviewed these um, chapters. Okay, and so one of the first things is how how do we define age groups? Remember, in community nursing, you are going to be potentially caring for clients across the entire lifespan. Okay, and so here's how uh, we've broken out the age groups in prenatal, infancy, early childhood, middle to late childhood, and adolescence. Okay, in every age group, um, their developmental and functional functional ability is different, okay? You always have to consider physical, cognitive, and psychosocial aspects of each group, okay? Cultural issues may also be a factor um, when looking at each group, okay? Okay, so um, this chapter goes through each of the the groups. It starts with the uh, first month of for the first month of life, the baby is considered a neonate. Okay, um, 
what is what kinds of health promotion um, activities would we be teaching and working with new families for infant health care, regular checkups, immunizations, okay, nutrition. Okay, we would start to look at development developmental milestones. Okay. We would look at cognitive development as well, so, um, psychosocial development. Okay, so I want you to have a look at um, each of these uh, groups. Okay, so the next group is your younger children, defined between those between 18 months and six years of age. And I know you've been introduced to these different groups in your previous classes. So now we're applying the um, community nursing concepts to taking care of all these different groups in the community. Okay. So uh, what are we going to do with regards to healthcare promotion activities for the young children? I've highlighted this. So here's some bullet points of what targets this group. So please have a look at that. Okay. And please take note of what areas I'm highlighting. Okay. And then we go to our middle and older children, uh, ages seven through 11 years old. Um, typically, these kids move, are going to elementary school, they're starting to join group activities, and they're trying to be more grown up, right? They're always filled with energy and enthusiasm, and they start to express ideas of their own and confidence in themselves. Okay, so each of these sections goes through physical development, cognitive development, psychosocial development, and it's important to know, you know, at least be able to identify what is a physical development of each age group, what, what is a psychosocial development of each age group, what's a cognitive development of each age group. Okay, and then we go through our adolescence. Okay, so that's what this chapter is about. <clears throat> um, so you should have an understanding of each of those five groups and then th the three um, areas that we're looking at for growth and development, physical, cognitive, and psychosocial, okay? And then, as always, at the end of each chapter, especially the full chapters you're responsible for, I would certainly um, take a look at these key points. Okay, this is a the nice summary of the points made in the chapter. Okay, so have a look at that. With regards to uh, chapter 12, which is adulthood in the family, um, again, the PowerPoint I sent you is a summary of the chapter. Um, please take a look at your objectives. Um, there's six of them here, and after reviewing the chapter, you should be able to answer these. Okay, so let's go to the first area I've highlighted. Um, here, um, functions of the family, okay? It's important to understand what, what is the makeup of every family. Okay, so these are typically the most common functions of the family. Each of these is going to look different in every single family, but this is essentially the functions the family is made up of, right? Physical maintenance, protection, nurturance, socialization, education, reproduction, recreation, and support. Okay, so these functions are all part of all families, and they're going to look significantly different from family to family. But those are the basic family functions, and that's important to know. Um, here, uh, we're moving now from, um, we're moving into adults, so young adults, okay? Uh, we always hear the word millennial. What do we consider millennials? All right, those are kids born between 82 and 2000. 
Okay. So we need to, we need to understand again, uh, physical development, cognitive development and psychosocial development. Okay. And it goes through each of these as well in this chapter. Okay. Here we start to look at health concerns of these different groups in the, in adulthood. Okay. So what are some health concerns of young adults? right? Risky behavior, stress-related illness, early disease, and then cognitive development. What's important to know with regards to cognitive development with this group? And then psychosocial development, okay? They're adding a few more sections here, like for example, uh, with the young adults, um, other than those three areas, they're adding developmental tasks. Okay, so uh, young adults may include marriage, may include parenting, may include home management, developing a social group, community responsibility. Those are all important areas to understand um, with regards to growth and development of the adult, young adult. And then we move into middle adulthood. Okay, that's considered ages 46 to 64. Okay. And again, we go through the different sections. And what may be occurring in those different sections. At this, uh, in this age, we have uh, health concerns, right? Health concerns become a much greater issue and uh, much riskier in middle adulthood. Okay. Cognitive. Work life is important in this group. Okay. And again, psychosocial development includes uh, marriage, friendships, parenting, caring for aging parents. Okay. So those are the different um, areas that are covered um, in adulthood. Again, we're looking at the same um, same assessment areas, such as physical, cognitive, psychosocial, but each group adds additional um, sections to be covered within that age group. So again, review your next gen, okay? Review your next gen. Uh, key points for this particular page, okay? So I wanted to review, before I go to the notes, um, school nurse and lead exposure, because these are two readings within your, within your Canvas module, and then I'm going to review the notes with you. Um, so I'm writing your module now. So school nurse, what do we know about the school nurse? What do you guys think the school nurse does? School nurse is one of the one of the uh, roles that the community nurse has. Okay. Um, so the school nurse's responsibility is essentially the safety and and health and well being of the kids in school. Okay. Um, it's estimated that 40% of the school age kids have at least one, one chronic health condition, asthma, diabetes, seizures, food allergies, poor oral health. Um, I just completed 20 years as a school nurse and, um, things are a lot different now than they were 20 years ago. Um, school nurses are performing many, many more activities. Okay. Um, some of the different roles. Um, a school nurse um, will take on uh, maybe a direct caregiver, right? So I know when I was in the schools, towards the end of my career in the last five years, I was um, doing G-tube feedings. I was doing trach suctioning. I was doing catheterizations. I was giving insulin. Okay, so those old days of going to the nurse's office for Band-Aids and ice pack are long over for the school nurse. Um, okay, we uh, so another, so that's direct caregiver role. One of our other big roles is health educator. 
And we are always providing health education, whether it's to the kids, the staff, the parents, okay? We're in the schools, you can be caring for kids from preschool all the way up to high school. Okay, so so you're always teaching about growth and development, about development and developmental milestones. You may be talking about puberty, substance abuse, suicide prevention, good hygiene, universal precautions, um, healthy diets, exercise. You may be taking care of obese students or you may be doing obese obesity prevention. Um, and then you're obviously, uh, working with kids with chronic illnesses, um, and taking care of them in the school setting. Okay. Um, another role is consultant, um, providing health information to teachers, administration, parents, um, as a school nurse, you're always part of the working on the team with special, special education. Um, the health piece of special special education assessments is critical. Okay. Another role is um, case manager. Case manager is essentially the coordinator, right? Where school nurses work as case managers to help manage kids with chronic um, complex health issues. Okay. It may be coordinate, coordinating with PT and OT and speech or, you know, social worker, okay? We also may be working with families to get insurance, mm -hmm. all right, to, to consult with different doctors about whether they're having, um, wh whatever kinds of issues they're having, we may be the conduit um, between parents and doctors, Okay. So we actually had to pivot a few years ago during the pandemic um, and do everything remotely. Um, we did a lot of telehealth with parents and students with regards to COVID. Um, we became essentially public health COVID nurses in the last couple of years. Um, and that was quite a challenge shifting from actually being in buildings to doing everything remotely. Okay. Um, we're also involved in counseling, you know, working with um, counseling with staff and students. We are involved in wellness program development. Um, we are involved in providing mental health services and referrals. So lots and lots of things we do. Okay. And here are some, uh, some CDC links to the CDC with regards to school nursing. Um, we do have a scope of practice in school nursing and it's um, within the National Association of School Nurses. That's who we look to for guidance, CDC and National Association of School Nurses. Um, so school nurses play an incredibly critical role in the health and safety and well-being of our kids um, from preschool all the way up through high school. The other thing we do is, is uh, community outreach, you know, where we set up health fairs, we set up immunization clinics, we volunteer with other organizations to provide health screenings. So really, really involved. <clears throat> the other topic I wanted to cover that's in your Canvas reading is lead exposure. Okay, lead exposure is a big issue with kids. <clears throat> Pardon me, and how can we prevent lead exposure? or manage it, prevent it, manage it, identify kids at risk. Okay, the harmful effects of childhood lead exposure can be prevented. Okay, the key is keeping the kids um, away from coming in contact with lead. Okay, there's lead in soil, air, paint, water. Okay, um, if the if kids are exposed, um, what kinds of health risks do they face? Damage to the brain and nervous system, slowed growth and development, learning and behavior problems, and potentially hearing and speech problems. 
right? There's there's lots of ways we can, um, parents can, uh, lots of ways we can reduce the child's exposure before they're harmed, okay? We know that uh, young kids can be indirectly exposed to lead when they put objects in their mouth, toys, trinkets, fingers, right? <clears throat> Putting things in their mouth is all part of their normal development. Right, they may come in contact with lead through paint chips or the dust from lead paint. Right, and that could be in schools, buildings, homes. Right, that may have, uh, you know, we always think of old paint and dropping down to the windowsills, right, and kids putting that in their mouth. Okay. Their more common exposure, though, is swallowing the house dust or soil that may contain some lead paint. Okay, that's a common source of lead exposure. And as we talked about, <clears throat> exposure can lead to serious harm with the child's health. What do we do? While there's lots of new zoning and codes now, thank goodness, uh, for building new homes or remodeling. Um, maybe older homes or schools, we may be encouraging paint removal. Right? Prep how do we prepare the services, surfaces before we're repainting? Okay, there's also other sources besides just paint. You can have dust from the soil. You can, which is contaminated with lead from gasoline, aviation fuel, mining, or the mining industries, drinking water, lead-based pipes, faucets, plumbing fixtures, and then um, also exposure from traditional medicines and cosmetics, and then some consumer products. <clears throat> Adults can also be... Um, at risk for lead exposure, whether it's at work or from some different hobbies, right? They, um, and it gives you a list here of different um, hobbies that may expose you to lead. Home repair, if you're doing home repairs, remodeling, pottery, battery recycling. This is an excellent resource here. Um, from the CDC with regards to lead poisoning. So I would encourage you to read that. Okay. And then I just want to cover the notes here. Um, make sure we covered the school nurse. I'm just going through the week two notes. We covered the school nurse. Um, the second section is prevention in the school setting. So we're going back to schools. It gives a nice summary of primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention um, in the school setting. So I'd like for you to read through these sections. Remember, primary prevention is, or primary intervention is prevention of something before it even happens. Okay, secondary is screening, right? So would be screening, we're, we're talking school nurses now, so we could be screening for obesity, screening for um, lead exposure, screening for uh, lice, okay? Uh, jumping back to primary prevention, um, we could be educating, especially the school-aged children on the, the and the adolescents on these uh, um, benefits of, they have seatbelt safety, helmets for bike riding, playground safety, try to help teach them and, and educate them on prevention of sports-related injuries, okay? Secondary prevention we talked about, um, that could be, um, like I said, screening kids for, for different health risks. It could be taking care of the kids in the clinic uh, when they come in, um, maybe screening for chicken pox, conjunctivitis, Okay, scoliosis screenings. And again, I'm just going from your notes now. Okay, so tertiary prevention is they already have something going on. So we're trying to help them help them manage that. All right. So like if they're taking medication for asthma or allergies or ADHD, tertiary is 
providing those medications during the school day. And then we work with parents and teach them, teaching them how to take care of their kids with chronic illnesses. The next section of your notes is family development. Okay, so please take a look, take a look at that section. Um, family health risks. Okay, so family health risks. Um, how are the risks derived? Are they genetic? from previous generations? Are they environmental? Are they behavioral? Okay, and then the last section goes through all the ch ch common childhood ailments, which you should be familiar with from previous classes. Um, so it discusses asthma, discusses eczema, type one diabetes, conjunctivitis. These are all, um, these are all, common ailments that you'll get asked about on the first exam, okay? So um, lice is in here, ADHD, iron deficient anemia, scoliosis, and then finally lead exposure. So you need to take, like we talked about in week one, this class is all about taking your previous knowledge from previous classes and being introduced to the concepts in previous classes and applying them to the community setting. So taking care of a child with asthma in the hospital is gonna look different than taking care of a child in the school setting or in the home setting, okay? So that is my uh, content coverage for this week. We'll see you in class. Thank you.